So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome you again today. But today to Vision Sunday, this is the day quite often at the very start of the year, we love to talk about the year ahead. We love to give you an opportunity to hear about some of the things that we would like to do over the course of the year. And it's not really so much, I should correct that, it's not really so much what we want to do, but what we believe, we've prayed and we've asked and we believe God has said, do these things, prioritise these things over the course of the year. And it's great to be able to spend just a few minutes now talking to you about that in greater detail. One of the things I will say as we begin is that we're very restricted at the minute because we're in a, U- a lockdown across the UK at the moment. But the things that I'm going to tell you about this morning are things that we can do even though we're on a lockdown. Even with restrictions, you can still do these things. It may take a bit of creativity. You may say at first, well, I don't think I can do that. But actually, I really think you can. It may not be in the way you'd like to. But you can do these things even with restrictions. What we're thinking about as the year goes on is that we may have um, a couple of other Sundays in 2021 where we kind of re-establish the vision for the year, particularly as things change to give you more of an opportunity to do some of these things uh, as hopefully restrictions lift. Let's pray for that. Let's believe this is going to be the year where we see the back of this virus. The great G.K. Chesterton once said, I have always felt life first as a story. And if there is a story, then there is a storyteller. Let me read that to you again. G.K. Chesterton, he said, I I had always felt life first as a story. And if there is a story, then there is a storyteller. And before I go on any further, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a church. And in this church, every person loved one another truly, dearly, and deeply. It was a church where outsiders, people who came in for the first time, people who felt rejected by other people all the way across their lives, came in and they were greeted like long-lost friends, they were treated with dignity, with kindness, whoever they were, wherever they were from, whatever their status in life was. In this church, the people prayed fervently. They knew what it was to pray, to honour God with their lips, to seek, to connect all the time. Their prayer meetings were packed out. Their prayer meetings were more like Sunday mornings, because people in this church knew the power of prayer. This was a church not where people attended, but where people participated, where every single person said, I know God for myself and I want other people to know him as well. In this church, the area around where the church is, kingdom values became the norm. Businesses started treating stuff properly and fairly. They didn't want to seek to cheat to get a competitive advantage. They wanted to do what God had called them to do. And it was a church that didn't just see itself confined to a building, but sought to always be going out there, always taking the gospel to the people. They saw new people saved all the time. And in this church, every single person of every age was someone who was a disciple of Jesus Christ. And it, it was a church where every single person all the time was going deeper with God, saying, my life is not my own. I was bought at a price. I want to know my Savior. The church was called Life Church Lincoln. This is a story of our future. This is where God wants us to move forward towards in 2021. I don't believe we'll see the fullness of everything in 2021 that we want to see. But you know what? By setting some goals, by keeping our eyes fixed on what God wants us to do, we will get a lot closer than if we're just going to carry on doing what we're doing. What's more, I don't know who you are, 
I might not even know your name. I may never have met you in person. But whoever you are, I want to say to you, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this back uh, later on, you don't just have a part to play. No. You are a member of the cast of the story. You are written into it. You have the part already given. It's not just a walk-on part. You are vital. Only you have what you have to give. And we want to know you, and what's more, God wants to know you more as well. We focused in this last year on what really, in, in a way, getting through. But this year, 2021, we want to push forward. We want to say, this is the year the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad. We're going to see great things happen. And I want to tell you more now about things, three things that we really believe God has said we need to prioritize this year. Our future starts now. Wouldn't it be amazing if we became that church? But why do we have a vision Sunday? Why do we seek to talk about vision? Why do we cast vision? Why bother having it? Well, Habakkuk 2 verse 2 in the New Living Translation says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. In other words, the reason I'm talking about vision this morning is we want to know where we're going and we all need to know what that is. Can I just say one last time, this is not all of my idea. This is not the core leadership team's idea. This is not some working party that's put, been put together and said, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we prioritise this this year? No, this is what we believe God has said about this year. So my friends, if you don't like it, can I suggest you go away and pray and ask why not? They're all really good things as well. If we can each grasp this morning, just like in Habakkuk 2, verse 2, then the Lord said to me, write the, my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. If we can each grasp that, if we each know where we're headed, then we will have something to aim at. We will know where we're going. We will know how to shape our future. No, I apologise. No, I don't apologise for using a sports analogy, but no sports team wins a championship by accident. FA Cup third, third round yesterday, whoever wins that competition will not win it by accident. They'll win it because they're good, but they'll win it because they're good at overcoming adversity, they're good at what they do, and they have the eyes fixed on the prize. We need to be like that. So many Christians never achieve anything in their life because they're going around just aimlessly, not really aiming at something. Let's let this year be the year that we really aim at something. Let's just clarify, what are we actually talking about here? What do we mean when we say vision? Well, vision simply means if we, we live, live lives of vision, if we are a church that is led with vision, then we know quite simply where we're going. Our vision as a church is this. We are a church called for purpose to lead people into a powerful, life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We seek to cultivate thriving, genuine community where ordinary people can belong and be empowered to do extraordinary things. Operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, we will see lives and communities transformed. Not might, we will. We already have since we adopted that vision. We will see more. That's our vision. That's where we're going. What is our mission as a church, and what is a mission? Well, a mission is simply who we are. This is what we're here to do. Our mission is this. At Life Church, we, be we believe God is inviting everyone to go on the most amazing journey of discovery. Today, God is inviting you to discover who he created you to be. Our mission is to walk with you on that journey as you connect to God, the community, and the church to help you grow into the person he's created you to be and to see you thrive as the person you were purposed to become. Vision is where we're going. Mission is who we are. What about our values? Or you could call them core beliefs. What Our values are simply the kind of people that we are along the way to achieve, achieving our vision. It's not 
there, there is no point in just going along and not adopting a set of values. We need to know who we need to be along the way. Our values. We operate with generosity and value community. We value the Bible as the word of God and walk in relationship with the Holy Spirit. We operate out of our heavenly identities, acting with integrity in all things. We are bold in our creativity and courageous in our lives with God. We value action in mission and believe that everyone is called to participate. Our values are these. Love, faith, authenticity, courage, action. Love, faith, authenticity, courage, action. Love, faith, authenticity, courage, action. Finally, I want to talk about a little thing that begins with an S, and that is strategy. Our strategy is simply how we get there. But our strategy is not the most important thing. However, and I hope this will ring some bells, I hope this doesn't make you feel bad, but I hope this makes you feel filled with hope about the future. And it's this, God has spoken to me and he said too many churches and individuals become wedded to strategy. Too many churches and individuals become wedded to strategy. Lots of fallouts in churches are about strategy. Not about vision. Everyone might agree on the vision, but when strategy becomes your primary focus rather than the vision, then you always go wrong. Or you will go wrong sooner or later. I'll give you an example. If that doesn't make sense, I'll give you an example and hopefully it will. So the vision is where we're headed. The strategy is simply how we get there. The vision is one thing, one thing, we're uncompromising on that, that is where we're headed. The strategy, you could have a million different ways of getting there. All that matters is that you get there. Hopefully as quickly as possible, but if you do have to go a bit around the houses, well, do you know what? The main thing is that you get there. I'll give you an example. People quite often in church life will become more bothered about an event or a ministry, which is strategy, than why we're doing what we are and where we're headed. Very often people become, even when you see, and I've, I've seen some really sad things over the years, you see certain ministries over time, they kind of, you know, they might have started out quite well or with good intentions, but over time they fall to bits. Over time it's like flogging a dead horse, but we keep going because that's what it's all about for us. It's why some dead ministries keep going for time immemorial, immemorial, because it becomes more about the strategy than the vision. It becomes more about what we're doing than where we're going. Because we can have a great vision, which is our destination, but if the strategy, our vehicle, as to, or vehicles as to how we get there, is what we give our main or sole focus to, we will eventually go wrong. If your reason for being part of a church was just so that you could feel a little bit better, or just so that, well, do you know, such and such gives, you know, I'm going to serve on this thing so it gives me some validation. If that is your sole reason, it will fall to bits eventually. It needs to be bigger than that. You need to know where you're headed, not what you're doing. What you're doing is immat mainly immaterial. It's about where you're headed. And what you do needs to take you to where you're going. Think about it like this. If you are planning a day out in London, what is your sole focus? Well, it's about what you're going to do when you get there, isn't it? You might want to go to Madame Two Swords. You might want to go and see Big Ben. You might want to uh, go on the London Eye, see Buckingham Palace, whatever it may be. That is the sole focus. That is the vision. I want to go to London for a great day out. Personally, I don't care how I get there. Yeah, the train might be quick. Yeah, it might be better going down the A1. But you know, if there's a diversion, I have to go down, go down uh, the M11. <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as I get there. That is the main thing. See, I've just talked about three strategies there. Three strategies, one vision. Can we as a church please, from now on, 
start thinking, do you know, all we care about is that we are a church called for purpose to lead people into a powerful, life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We seek to cultivate thriving, genuine community where ordinary people can belong and be empowered to do extraordinary things. Operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, we will see lives and communities transformed as our sole focus. Doesn't matter how we get there. I don't care. I just care that we get there. And whatever ministries, whatever things that we do that work, great. What doesn't work, great. What works for a season, great. When it's over, let's cut it off. Let, as long as we fulfill our vision, as long as we get there. Because the point is this. If our sole focus becomes the vision, then we won't care if our strategies fail. We won't care. Yeah, there might be one or two tears, but ultimately we will not care. Because we're not passionate about the journey that we take. We're passionate about getting to the destination. We'll know that the vision is set, but the strategies are many and replaceable. Just like a road diversion. Main thing is that you get there. Let's focus on where we're headed. The destination, not how we get there. So to fulfill the next part of our vision, we want to focus on three main priorities this year. And what we're going to be doing is spending the next three weeks, next three Sundays in January, talking about these three things. Three things that we think are just really important. Yeah, there's other things we could do, but God has said, focus on these three things this year, because I believe if we do this, by the end of this year, we'll be much the better for it. We'll be more like that church that I told you about at the start. Our first focus is prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, never stop praying. That's simple and it's effective. And I believe in the last couple of years, we've made monumental strides forward in prayer in this church, but there's always more. We have an incredible team, the engine room team. I believe they're the engine room of our church that keep us moving and going forward. But do you know what? It's not sufficient just to have them. We need every single person in this church, not necessarily on that team, but we need every single person praying, connecting to God. There's always more. I believe that God moves in the lives of people when they pray. I believe that God, so often, before he's about to act, in a big way, causes people to pray. I believe that a church that dares to pray and to prioritise prayer will move forward. I believe this area, when we pray for it, as we have been doing for some time now, will change. I believe things will change. Chains will break when we pray. Injustices will cease when we pray. It may take some time, but when we pray, things will change. We want to play our part in our great city, this great city of Lincoln, but we want to take responsibility for the, air, the various areas that we primarily serve. It's important that this year that you connect with God daily through prayer, that you place your day before him into his hands and say, Lord, I can do nothing without you. I need to be with you today. I need you to be with me. I need to know your plans and purposes for me. As someone once said, I think it was Eugene Peterson, he said, prayer gets us in on what God is doing. Prayer isn't simply giving God a list of things that we want, but it's often speaking to ourselves and saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Prayer, priority number one. Priority number two, man, do we need this? Does a dying world need this? Our second priority is evangelism. Second Peter 3 verse 9 says the Lord is not slow in keeping his, promi his promise, as, someone, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Our world is dying, and people are going to hell right now because so in some situations, those people have never been told who Jesus is. They've never been told what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Many people don't really know who Jesus is. They just think he's a swear word. Or they might think he was a good man. Let me tell you, there is so much more to Jesus than that. If you think he was just a good man, seriously, you need to know more. 
A lot of people just don't know about the eternity shifting work that Jesus accomplished at the cross, that Jesus is always with us. And the reason we want to focus on evangelism this year, as well as prayer, and as well as something else I'll tell you about in the future, is that Jesus was the light of the world, but he called us light, the light of the world. He said, you, my people, are the light of the world. We're here to bring the good news to people, not whether or not we think they deserve it. If you're in that position at the minute, can I suggest you read Jonah and specifically focus on the challenge at the end? You didn't deserve what God gave you. No one, no one else deserves it, but because of his mercy, God who is rich in mercy, he saved us by his grace. If you, being really honest with yourself, are in a, I'm sorry this, this is challenging, but if you are in a bit of a holy huddle this morning and you're thinking, well, do you know, I want to keep my faith personal, you know, it's really personal to me. I don't really want to share my faith with anyone because it's just really personal. I kind of want to just keep it to myself. I don't want to tell anyone. What if the person who told you about Jesus, whether it was a parent, whether it was a friend or sibling or whoever, what if they'd done that? You would literally be on your way, maybe very slowly, but to hell in a handbasket. Would you want that for yourself? Would you want it for anyone else? Do you want it for anyone else? No? Thought not. We're going to need to maybe break down one or two barriers inside ourselves this year. We cannot allow people to die without knowing Jesus. We need to play our part. And it's not up to someone else, it's up to you. And it's up to me to play our part. And you can think, well, do you know what? I'll, I'll, they, they, didn't, they didn't really evangelise at this other church, and so I'll... You know, maybe I should just go there because they don't make me do this. Well, do you know what? They should be doing it. And sooner or later, they will be doing it. So why don't you just get on and let's evangelize now and let's tell people the message of Jesus now. I got to share the message of Jesus with someone most recently who doesn't know him on Thursday. And it was exciting. And I've got a follow-up with that person so I can see where we go with it. They've not made themselves a disciple of Jesus Christ yet, but I believe that the day is coming where that is going to happen. In 2021, we do, and we'll be talking about this in the next couple of two or three weeks, we would like, if we can, to do one or two evangelistic events. But more than that, and especially if that's not going to be possible because of restrictions, we want you to share the message of Jesus Christ with people you know so that you can perhaps see them come to faith. What might change in 2021 if you say, okay, I'll just tell people about what Jesus has done in my life. That's all you need to do. It's really simple. It's really easy. You don't have to thrust it on people. 30 seconds. Prayer, evangelism. Thirdly, this year, thirdly and finally, our our third main focus is going to be something which I regret. I don't think we've ever really done very well, and I hope and pray we will this year. But the third thing is discipleship. Discipleship. I'm sorry I'm talking a little bit longer than I should have this morning, but I'm feeling so passionate, and I'm nearly through. John 8, 31 to 32. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Pete Duke, I can't remember whether it was last year or the year before, gave us a great bit of revelation. He said it's not the truth that sets you free, it's the truth you know that sets you free. Speaking really personally, for a lot of my life, I felt as though God was really angry at me because I wasn't, if, particularly if I wasn't really spending enough time in prayer or if I'd you know, sinned and even if I'd asked for forgiveness, I thought God was really angry at me. And it took a friend of mine to open the scriptures with me and pray for the Holy Spirit to come for me to realize that God was just passionately desperate to spend time with me and he wasn't angry at me, he loves me and he wants a better life for me than the life I was settling for. You see, it's the truth you know that sets you free. I want you this year to know God in greater measure. That's what happens when you're a discipleship. Disciple means student. If you can ask yourself this morning, you may have been a student of a school in your life. 
you may have been a student of a college or a university, but if you were to ask yourself, hand on heart, am I a student of Jesus Christ? Am I someone who seeks to know more of who he is? There's loads of easy ways that you can begin to do that, but we want to put more of an emphasis and make it more easily available for people to be disciples, for you to become a student of Jesus this year. So that when we're stand, standing here in a year's time, you can say, I'm so much further on than I was at the start of 2021. We don't just want you to know who God created you to be. We also want you to know how God created you to be. Not living for faith by works, but beginning to understand what does it really mean, say this year, to live as a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, especially in the 21st century? What does it really mean? What do I really need to do? Who do I really need to be? How can I become a better disciple? How can I know more? I might have like, hit a bit of a brick wall. I'm not, not really sure where to go next. I've made the stupid mistake of thinking, well, do you know, I think I've got a pretty good handle on things. And I don't think I really need to know a lot more. And then suddenly I realise I know virtually nothing and I need to know so much more. As I finish and as our band return, we're going to focus again on these three things this year. But I believe, can I, can I encourage you to write these things down? You, and this is not me trying to get all well, you know, trying to get people to do things I want them to do. This is not me... <sighs> We can make such a mistake in our lives if we don't really know where we're headed, if we're not really aiming for something. I know for all of us so often that we're better than what we're settling for. We could get something so much more wonderful. I encourage you the next three Sundays, please do make sure you're listening to the service live if possible. Make sure you participate. We want you to know how you can take part more this year in prayer, in evangelism, in discipleship. We want to move forward this year. We want to become that church I told you about at the start of my um, message. What's more, we can be creative with these things. You see, you can still evangelize, you can still pray, and you can still be discipled, even when you're on a lockdown. Even if you just have to ring someone or talk to someone through their window or something like that, I don't know. Tell them. Tell them the message. If you think you can't, then you won't. If you think you might be able to, then you will. You'll find a way. I just try to adopt this thing in my mind all the time. There has just got to be a way. No matter when, what difficulties I face, there has got to be a way. Because God saw all this coming. God's kingdom is unstoppable. God is reaching so many people, particularly, I wasn't going to say this, but particularly in the... Um, so many younger people, people between about, well, very, very young, you know, children up to about early to mid-twenties. This is the age bracket I still kind of sometimes act like I'm in at the moment. And I'm actually a really, I'm getting a bit old now. But young people are finding God for themselves. And you know what? It's in a bit of a different way to what a lot of us have experienced. That's okay, it doesn't matter. It just means that they find him. You see, remember, it's not about the way, you, it's not about how you get there, it's about where you're headed. Lastly, in, with this unstoppable kingdom, with this incredible God that we serve, can I ask you a question? Firstly, two questions. Firstly, will you write these things down and say, this year, I'm going to play my part in, and again, it's last, last, last time, this is not me saying these are good things for us to emphasize. This is what we believe God has called us to emphasize this year. Prayer, evangelism, discipleship. I'm going to pray I'm going to tell people the message. I'm going to become a better student of Jesus Christ this year. Can we, secondly, in 2021, as well as writing those things down, can we each, in a new way, take up our unique role in God's great story this year? Will you put... The disappointment, the rejections, the frustrations of the past, maybe even the frustrations of the present, to one side behind you and trust God and just believe that what God says is true, that he's moving us forward and that this year, things, this can be the year when things really do change, really do change for the better 
for you and for the people you know. Maybe for the people you don't know as well. Because God has not called you to have faith in him for your benefit alone. He's called you to have faith in him so that you can be blessed, but also be blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. Your life is not your own, you were bought at a price. If you're not blessing others, can I encourage you? You really need to get working on this this year. Lastly, if, you, if all this seems like a little bit too much, can I just remind you that if you've trusted Jesus with your eternity, you can trust him with 2021.